Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, August 26, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, baseball and WNBA games. Look ahead to today's slate and all those sports. I'll give you a pick for the BMW Championship in golf. Another NBA coaching change and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the NBA. We'll go over the results from last night and look ahead to today's games. Um, three games today, actually, in the NBA. And there were two last night. Nuggets over the Jazz 117-107 as they force a game six. Jamal Murray, another big game, 42 points, 8 boards, 8 assists. He has been absolute money in this playoff series. No turnovers, too, by the way. Donovan Mitchell, 30 points and 5 assists, 4 turnovers. So um, both of those guards have been tremendous in the series. Murray really has upped his trade value. Not that Denver would trade him, but I'm just throwing it out there that he's really been a... uh, breakout star in these uh, playoffs thus far. Clippers absolutely destroy the Mavericks, 154-111, um, to take a 3-2 series lead. Paul George looked like the Paul George we all know and love. 35 points for PG-13 after a horrible game four. And... Obviously, he he was uh, getting doubted by people in the media and fans, and uh, he really uh, shoved it up their butts last night. So good on Paul George. Luka Doncic, 22 points, 8 boards, and 4 assists. They missed Chris Stapps, Porzingis, badly. Not that they were going to uh, win the game, obviously, but maybe um, they score more and maybe the Clippers... um, don't get everything they want because Porzingis is a better defensive player to give it credit for. He's a good rim protector, especially when he plays at the five. So three games today, four o'clock on NBA TV. You got the Magic and the Bucks. Um, Game five, Milwaukee can close out this series with the win here. If we're allowed the wins, there'll be a game six on Friday. I would make Milwaukee a 14-point favorite. I'd make the total 20 or 221 and a half. And Milwaukee is actually favored by 14. But the total is 227 and a half. So I have a big edge on the under. So I'm going to take the under 227 and a half. I think Milwaukee closes out. And um, their series against the Heat will get underway hopefully over the weekend. 6.30 on TNT, you have the Thunder and the Rockets Game 5. I would make the Thunder two-point favorites without Russell Westbrook, and I'd make the total 223. Meanwhile, um, DraftKings here has it at Rockets by 3.5, total 224.5. I love the Thunder getting the 3.5. I take them on the money line at plus 140. I think they go up 3-2. I think the loss of Russell Westbrook has haunted... The Rockets, these last two games, Chris Paul's really turned his game on. Dennis Schroeder's been very good. Um, So give me the Thunder plus the two, or I'm sorry, plus the three and a half, and I think they win the game outright. So um, give me Oklahoma City in the points and on the money line at a ridiculous plus 140. And last but not least, 9 o'clock on TNT, you got the Blazers and the Lakers. Lakers are um, favored by 13 over under 223. I'd make it Lakers by 13 and a half. And my total 218, obviously, that's adjusted line without Damian Lillard. I think he's worked a lot to the point spread. And they feel the same way as me about the number of points he's worth. Um... But I have a big edge on the total. I think the under is an absolute possibility, especially without Lillard. I have a five-point edge on the under. So give me the under. I think the Lakers close out tonight. I'm going to whiff on my Lakers in six pick because of the absence of Lillard. So give me the Lakers to win the game. I think they'll cover the 13 too. I have a half-point edge on the Lakers, but I just think that um, without Lillard, 
that I don't think this game's really going to be competitive. I think it's going to be similar to Game Five, quite frankly. And I, but my play for the podcast is under two twenty three. So it should be a interesting night of games for tonight, for sure. And now we'll move on to the NHL. Um, two games last night, three games today. Um, lightning over the Bruins, four to three, and overtime on a goal by Andres Palat to even up the series at one apiece. Number three started the game with two goals, Brad March, and number two started the game with the overtime winner, Andre Palat, and the number one started the game with two goals, Blake Coleman. That's looking like a better trade as this bubble playoffs has gone on for Tampa Bay. I thought they overpaid for Blake Coleman, but he's been absolutely fantastic in these playoffs for the Bolts. Canucks over to Golden Knights, 5-2, to two, leaving up the series at one apiece. I thought about picking the Canucks on the podcast yesterday, but... I didn't go with the trigger. I just said that, that they play better than they did against Vegas in game one, and certainly they did as they got the win outright. They even up the series at one apiece. The number three started the game with a goal and two assists. Elias Pettersson, number two, started the game with two goals. Bo Horvat in the number one start of the game with a goal and two assists. Tyler Toffoli. I don't think I've said his name yet as uh, these playoffs have been underway. Wednesday, so which is today, this afternoon, 3 o'clock, NBCSN, you have the Islanders and the Flyers. Game 2, um, Flyers are slight favorites at minus 109, Isles are minus 106. I'm going to go with the Flyers here to even up the series at one apiece. The theme of the second round thus far has been, uh, with the exception of the one series, which we'll get to, um, than the uh, responses by the other teams. So I think Philadelphia is going to follow in the footsteps of Tampa Bay and Vancouver and even up the series at one apiece. And I think Carter Hart would have will have a better game. And I think that um, the Islanders offensively may regress a little bit here. So give me the Flyers even this thing up at one apiece. 8 o'clock on NBCSN, you have the Lightning and the Bruins, game number three. Um, Boston is a slight favorite, minus 112. Tampa's minus... 104. Um, I'm going to go with Boston to go up 2 1. Um, back to backs are hard. Yaroslav Halak will be in net for the, um, the Bruins, uh, replacing Tuka Rask, obviously, who opted out of the restart. Um, I just think that, um, they could have and should have probably won game two. And so I would say Boston would bounce back here. Um, I think Tampa has a little bit of a letdown after that comeback yesterday. So give me the Bruins to go up two games um, to one. So um, give me Boston there. 1030 Colorado and Dallas on NBCSN. Um Colorado is a big favor in minus 143. Dallas is plus 123. Um, the Avalanche have a boatload of injuries, and they have not looked good in this star series. Meanwhile, Dallas has been red hot in these playoffs, and they have the makings of something special going on right now. Um, this is such a difficult call here. Um. Hmm. Philip Gaubauer out. Eric Johnson out. Um. Like I said, Dallas has been really, really awesome. Ever since game, I want to say it was game four against Calgary. They've been unreal offensively. Their goaltending has been better. Um, so this is a really hard call here. So just from reading from Twitter, um, Matt Calvert is out or was out for game two. Um, 
Obviously, Gallbauer with the leg injury. Um, Eric Johnson hasn't played either. This is so hard, guys. They always say Vegas knows. I'm going to do it one more time and go with the Avalanche. I don't feel good about it. Uh, Dallas has just been marvelous. And they look like a team that's, like I said, poised to do special things in this restart. So, give me the abs. I don't feel good about it whatsoever. Now we'll move on to Major League Baseball. We'll go over the games from yesterday and look ahead to the games for today. Yesterday was supposed to be the day where all 30 teams were supposed to play, but the Yankees and the Braves got rained out. Now, today um, won't be the case either because of uh, Hurricane Laura that's coming into uh, the Houston area. Astros over the Angels 6-3 in Game 1 of the doubleheader. Astros 17-13, and 13, Angels 9-22. and 22. Christian Javier, the win, he's 3-1. Jose Suarez lost 0 2. Ryan Presley gets his fourth save of the season. The lone home run in this game was off the bat of Tommy Lasala. Javier 5 2, third three, it's three runs, two walks, five strikeouts, 0 3.77. Suarez was the opener. In inning five hits, five runs, four walks, two strikeouts, 0 38.57. Jame Barria in relief was pretty good. Five innings, a hit, and a run, two walks, four strikeouts, 0 2.89. Marlins over the Nets. Marlins over the Mets 4-0 in game one of their doubleheader. Um, getting the win for Miami Richard Bleer. The loss, Rick Porcello, he's 1-4. No home runs in this game. Um, starting the game for Miami was Daniel Castano. 4-2, um, and two, third, six hits, one, no one runs, two outs, and a strikeout area, 4.11. Uh, Rick Porcello, 3 innings, 5 hits, 4 runs, no walks, 4 strikeouts, area, 6 point. 4-3. Phillies over the Nationals, 8-3. The Phillies are 11-14. Washington, 11-16. Jake Arrieta, the win. He's 2-3. Eric Feed, the loss, 1-2. Home runs. Trey Turner, JT Romuto, Adam Eaton. Jake Arrieta, 5 innings, 3 hits, no runs, or 1 and run, a walk and a strikeout area, 4.32. Um, Eric Feed, 5 innings, 7 hits, 4 runs, a walk and a strikeout area, 3.57. Red Sox over the Blue Jays. 9 to 7 Boston 10 and 20 Toronto 14 and 14 getting the win for Boston Phillips Valdez he's 1 and 0 Wilmer Fontelos 1 and 3 Matt Barnes gets his second save of the season the lone home run in this game came in the ninth inning off the bat of Teoscar Hernandez getting the start for Boston was Kyle Hart 3 and a third 8 hits 6 home runs through three strikeouts or 8 of 13 Chase Anderson 5 innings 7 three runs a walk three strikeouts or 3.68 Rays over to Orioles 4-2. The Rays are 20-11. Baltimore 14-15. Tyler Glass now gets his first win of the season. He's 1-1. Tommy Malone, the loss, 1-4. Getting his first save of the season, Edgar Garcia. Home runs, Renato Nunez, Hunter Renfro, Manuel Margo. Glass now, 7 innings, 5 hits, 2 and runs, a walk, and 13 strikeouts. Here a 5.14. That was by far his best game of the season. Tommy Malone, five and a third, four hits, two runs, a walk, six strikeouts, area, 3.99. Angels over the Astros, 12 to 5 in the second of the doubleheader games. Angels, 10 and 22, Houston, 17 and 14. Felix Pena, 2 and 0 with the win, and Brandon Belak, the loss, he's 3 and 2. Home runs in this game. Luis. Rangifo of the Angels, um, Abraham Toro of the Astros, and Dustin Garneau of the Astros. Julio Tehran got the start for the Angels, four and two-thirds, four hits, three and runs, no walks, three strikeouts, three, 9.17. Belak was pretty much an opener. Two-thirds of an inning, three hits, three runs, three walks, and no strikeouts. Here we have 5.4. Indians over the Twins, 4-2. to two. The Indians, 18-12. Minnesota, 20-11. Big win for Cleveland to get within a game of the loss column of Minnesota. Shane Bieber to win, 6-0. Jorge Alcala, the loss, 1-1. One one. Brad Hand gets his eighth save of the season. 
the lone home run in this game was a go-ahead home run off the bat of Francisco Lindor in the bottom of the sixth. Shane Bieber, six innings, four hits, two runs, walks, ten strikeouts, zero, eight, 1.35. Rich Hill, five innings, four hits, and a run, two walks, five strikeouts, zero, eight, 3.55. Tigers over to Cubs, 7-1. to one. Tigers, 12-16. and 16. The Cubs, 18-11. Stephen Turnbull, the win, 3-2. and two. Tyler Chat with the loss, 2-2. Two and two. Jonathan Scope hit a grand slam in this game. Wilson Contreras also homered for Chicago. Steven Turnbull, 5 and 2 thirds, 3 hits, no one runs, 3 walks, 5 strikeouts, you're 2.97. Tyler Chatwin, an inning and a third, 3 hits, 2 runs, 5 walks, 2 strikeouts, you're 6.06. So much for his hot start. Athletics over the Rangers, 10 to 3. Um, Oakland, 21 and 10. Texas, 11 and 18. Shaw and I had the win, 2 and 2. Kyle Gibson, the loss, 1 and 3. Home runs, Matt Olson and Marcus Simeon. Sean Manaya, his best start of the year. Five innings, six sets, an earned run, no walks, three strikeouts, or a 5.64. Kyle Gibson, six in the third, six hits, seven and runs, two walks, six strikeouts, or a 5.73. The A's hit my best bet by themselves in this game. I took the over in that um, A's Rangers game at eight and a half as the best bet yesterday. Um, White Sox over to Pirates, 4 nothing. The White Sox, 18 and 12. Pirates. 7-18, and 18. Lucas Giolito to win, 3-2, and two. Stephen Brault to loss, 0-1. Um, no home runs in this game, but Lucas Giolito threw a no-hitter, the first no-hitter of 2020. So, good for Lucas Giolito. The complete game, one walk, 13 strikeouts, you're a 3.09. His best start of his young career, granted that Pittsburgh lineup is terrible. Stephen Brawl, three innings, five hits, four runs, four walks, no strikeouts, ERA, 4.8. Brewers over the Reds, 3-2. The Brewers are 13-15. and 15. The Reds are 11-17. and 17. Brandon Woodruff, the win, 2-2. Two and two. Luis Castillo, the loss, 0-4. Josh Hader gets his seventh save of the season. No home runs in this game. Brandon Woodruff, six innings, four hits, two runs, a walk, eight strikeouts, ERA, 3.19. Luis Castillo, six innings, five hits, and a run, four walks, nine strikeouts, ERA, 3.9. Royals over the Cardinals, 5-4. The, the Royals, 12-18. The Cardinals 10 and 9. Getting the win for KC. Josh Stoutmout, he's 1 and 1. John Gant, the loss, he's 0 and 1. Trevor, Trevor Rosenthal getting the save against his former team. Oh, Mike Matheny back in um back with the back in St. Louis. That's a storyline that I never thought about until now. The lone home run in this game was a game tying home run by Ryan O'Hearn in the top of the six for the Royals. Matt Harvey got the start, two and two thirds, five hits, four runs, two walks, two strikeouts, area 11.12. Adam Wainwright, seven innings, seven hits, four runs, two walks, four strikeouts, area 2.88. Mariners over the Padres, eight to three. Mariners 12 and 19. San Diego, 18 and 13. Marco Gonzalez to win, three and two. Chris Paddock to lost, two and three. Home runs, J.P. Crawford, Eric Hosmer, who's off the injured list, and Austin Nola. Marco Gonzalez, five innings, nine hits, three runs, no walks, five strikeouts, rate 3.63. Chris Paddock, five innings, eight hits, six and runs, a walk, seven strikeouts, rate 5.15. He's been terrible this season. Very disappointing. Rockies over to Diamondbacks, five to four. As the Rockies go to 15 and 15, Arizona loses their eighth in a row, 13 and 18 on the season. Getting the win for the Rockies was John Diaz. I'm sorry, Jairo Diaz. He's one and one. Stefan Christian, the loss, he's 2-1 and one for Arizona. And Daniel Bard gets his third save of the season. Home runs, Christian Walker, John Jay. Um, Garrett Hampson of the Rockies. And that's it. Um, Herman Marquez, 5 innings, 6 hits, 3 and runs, 2 walks, 5 strikeouts, ERA, 4.5. Alex Young started for Arizona, 5 innings, 5 hits, 3 and runs, a walk, 5 strikeouts, ERA, 4.7. Marlins over the Mets, 3-0 in seven innings. Josh Smith gets the win for the Marlins. He's 1-0, getting the loss for the Mets. Jared Hughes, 0-1, and, and Nick Vincent gets his second save of the season. There's a, a home steal in this game. Um, John Birdie to make a 3-0. I thought that was impressive. Um, getting the start for... Miami, Trevor Rogers, four innings, one hit, no one runs, five walks, six strikeouts, ERA of zero. Seth Lugo, three innings, no hits, no one runs, no walks, five strikeouts, ERA 2.03. He was marvelous. 
Giants over the Dodgers 10 to 8 in 11 innings on a walk-off home run by Donovan Solano. San Francisco 15 and 16, Dodgers 22 and 9. Amazing that San Francisco if the season were to end today would be the 8th seed in the National League facing the Dodgers. That's sexy of a matchup in terms of a rivalry, but I don't know how it would play out in real life. Sam Selman the win, he's 1 to 0. Dennis Santana lost. He's one and two. Home runs: Max Muncy, Brandon Belt, Corey Seager. Brandon Belt again to tie the game up in the ninth inning, and then the walk off by Solano in the bottom of the eleventh. So, this was probably the game of the year because the Dodgers had a lead in the tenth and the eleventh. So, what a game! And starting this game for the Dodgers, or I'm sorry, for San Francisco was Johnny Cueto. Four innings, eight hits, six and runs, a walk, six strikeouts, zero five point four. Maybe he stays around now that the Giants have been winning. Granted, he did not pitch well yesterday. Julio Urias, four innings, six hits, four and runs, a walk, six strikeouts, zero three point six seven. Today's slate, two o'clock: the Pirates and the White Sox. Trevor Williams, Dallas Keuchel. Williams 1 and 4 with 3.7 ERA, whip of 1.36. Keiko 4 and 2 with a 2.65 ERA, whip of 1.02. 4 o'clock, Yankees Braves game 1 doubleheader. Garrett Cole against Ian Anderson. Cole 4 and 0, 2.75 ERA, whip of 0.89. Anderson making his big league debut. Phillies Nationals at 6 o'clock. Aaron Nola against Patrick Corbin. Both pitchers are 2 and 2. Nola 3.1 ERA, whip of 0.9. Corbin 3.99 ERA, whip of 1.26. Red Sox, Blue Jays at 6.30. Colton Brewer against TBD for Toronto. Brewer 0-1 with a 3.5 ERA, whip of 1.56. Orioles, Rays. Asher Wojciechowski and Trevor Richards. Wojciechowski 1-3 with a 4.84 ERA, whip of 1.34. Richards, no decisions, 5.94 ERA, whip of 1.68. 7 o'clock ESPN, Game 2 doubleheader, Yankees, Braves. Masahiro Tanaka against Max Freed. Tanaka 0-1 with a 4.6 ERA, whip of 1.34. Freed 4-0 with a 1.32 ERA, whip of 0.97. Um, I'm going to go with the Braves in this one. Um, They're fl- favored in this one. They should not be favored with when Garrett Cole's on the mound. Garrett Cole should not be an underdog, period, end of story. But I think the Braves are a little bit overpriced here. I think the Braves should be favored, but not by this much. But I'm going to go with the Braves here. I wouldn't lay the juice because I think it's too high. I think you could have got them maybe at minus 120. Maybe if the line goes down, then take a stab at the Braves because you know there's going to be Yankee money coming in. So I would wait to bet on the Braves if the line goes down, unless if, like, Aaron Judge isn't in the lineup like he's supposed to be returning today against the Braves. So um, give me Max Freed who really has stepped up as their ace this season with Mike Soroka out. He's probably this year's Mike Soroka, if you ask me. He's really, I think, the most improved pitcher on the Braves this season. So give me the Braves in Game 2 of the doubleheader against the Yankees. I I obviously think that the Yankees will win Game 1 with Garrett Cole on the mound against the rookie and Ian Anderson. Twins, Indians, Jose Barrios and Mike Clevenger. Barrios 2-3, the 4.75 ERA, whip of 1.38. Clevenger 1-1, the 3.24 ERA, whip of 1.32. Cubs, John Lester against Michael Fulmer. Lester 2-1 with the 5.06 ERA, whip of 1.09. Fulmer, no decision, 9.53 ERA, whip of 2.03. John Lester really has regressed after his hot start. And so have the Chicago Cubs, quite frankly. But the Cubs should win today. And I expect Lester to bounce back a little bit. Marlins, Mets, Jacob DeGrom against Alicia Hernandez. Hernandez 1-0 with a 2.29 ERA, whip of 0.76. DeGrom 2-0 with a 1.93 ERA, whip of 0.89. 8 o'clock, Athletics Rangers. Mike Fires and Colby Allard. Fires 3-1 with a 5.81 ERA, whip of 1.55. Allard 0-2 with a 7.82 ERA, whip of 1.82. Reds Brewers. Sonny Gray against Adrian Hauser. Gray 4-1 with a 2.21 ERA, whip of 0.98. Hauser 1-2 with a 3.72 ERA, whip of 1.8. To four Royals Cardinals at 8.15. Jacob Junis against Dakota Hudson. Junis, no decisions with a four ERA, whip of 1.67. Hudson 0 2 with a 3.46 ERA, whip of 1.08. 
9 o'clock, Mariners, Padres, Tyjohn Walker against Danielson, Lamette. Walker 2 and 2 at the 4 ERA, whip of 1.07. Lamette 2 and 1 at the 1.89 ERA, whip of 0.84. 940, Rockies, Diamondbacks, John Gray and Robbie Ray. Gray 1 and 3 at the 6.23 ERA, whip of 1.35. Ray 1 and 3 with an 8.33 ERA, whip of 2. You know that over is going to be bet like crazy tonight. 945 ESPN, the Dodgers and the Giants, Clayton Kershaw and Kevin Gassman. Um, Kershaw, 3 and 1 the 2.25 ERA, whip of 0.79. Gossman, 1 and 1 the 4.65 ERA, whip of 1.29. I like the Dodgers here to win. Um, I just think that um, this is a bounce back spot after a crushing loss last night. Um, Clayton Kershaw has been very good this season. So give me Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers to get a um, bounce back win against the Giants after a walk off defeat last night. Now we'll move on to the WNBA. We'll go over the games from last night and look ahead to the games that will be played tonight. Liberty over the sky, 101.99. So the Liberty get a win. They're two and twelve. Chicago ten and five. Amanda Zobby, twenty-two points for the Liberty with twelve boards. Allie Quigley at twenty-nine to lead Chicago. Aces over the Wings, ninety-six, ninety-two. The Aces, eleven and three. Dallas five and ten. Aja Wilson at twenty-six points. Satu Sabali had twenty-eight points with eleven boards. Storm over the Fever, eighty-seven, seventy-four. The Storm twelve and three. Indiana five and nine. Brianna Story at 27 points, 9 boards. Kennedy Burke, 17 points to lead Indiana. Tonight's slate, all national televised games. 7 o'clock ESPN 2. You have the Mystics and the Dream, two of the worst teams in the league. Um, I think the Mystics are better. They're better coached. Um, the best player in the court of this game could very well be Maisha Hines Allen. And then Emma Messerman would be the second best player on the court. Um... Benicia Laney's been pretty good for Atlanta, but I just don't think they're very good. So give me Washington to get a win here against the Dream. Eight o'clock, CBS Sports Network. Sparks were ten and three. The Lynx are nine and four. Great game. This is a great game. The Sparks have been very good. The Lynx have been better than I expected. Um, I'm gonna go with the Lynx. The Lynx have been a pleasant surprise this year. Jeff Maglachetti had the Lynx. Um being a better-than-expected team, so credit to him. Um, I think they get it done tonight against the Sparks. Um, so give me the Lynx tonight to uh, go to 10-4 and four on the season. And in 10 o'clock, CBS Sports Network, the Sun and the Mercury, um, two underachieving teams. I know Connecticut had a lot of opt-outs this season. I'm going to go with the Mercury. They have the better players, probably the best two players on the court in Diana Tarasi and Brittany Griner. So give me the Mercury over the Sun tonight to get back above 500 on the season. Now we will um, look at the odds for the BMW Championship, and I'll uh, give you a pick. Um, your favorite right now at eight to one is Dustin Johnson. He deserves to be favored after that dominant performance last weekend. John Rahm is ten to one. Justin Thomas twelve to one. Bryson DeChambeau thirteen to one. Xander Shoffley fifteen to one. Daniel Berger, Rory McElroy, Colin Marik was seventeen to one. Patrick Cantlay and Scotty Sheffler are thirty. Jason Day and Tony Finau are thirty one as well as Patrick Reed. Thirty five to one. Harry English, Tyrell Hatton, Kevin Kisner, Tiger. 40 to 1, Victor Hovland, Hideki Matsuyuma. 45 to 1, Adam Scott, Matthew Wolf. 50 to 1, Paul Casey, Billy Horschel. 55 to 1, Matthew Fitzpatrick. 70 to 1, Cameron Champ, Matt Kusher, Alexander Noren, Sun JM, Gary Woodland. Wow, Woodland at 70 to 1 is really good value. Russell Henley, 75 to 1, Ryan Palmer, 85 to 1, Abraham Answer, Kevin Na, Louis Utsen are all 90 to 1. I think. Those are all good value. Um, 100 to 1, Corey Connors, Brian Harmon, Jason Kokrak, Cameron Smith, Bubba Watson. Other guys 
that are notable. Um, Dylan Fratelli, Mark Hubbard, Brendan Steele all let, uh, won 10 to 1. So is Brendan Todd. Um, Adam Long won 50 to 1. Kevin Strillman 150 to 1. Joel Dahman 175 to 1. Tyler Duggan 175 to 1. Adam Hadwin and Mackenzie Hughes also 175 to 1. Same with Joaquin Newman and JT Potson. Um, hmm. Harry Higgs was 300 to 1. Same as, uh, Michael Thompson. Um, I'm going to go with Daniel Berger. He's 17 to 1 on DraftKings and on FanDuel. Um, hmm. Where is that? Golf. Daniel Berger's 20 to 1 on FanDuel. So, um, I suggest you guys get the FanDuel number 20 to 1 rather than the DraftKings number at 17 to 1. So, Daniel Berger, 20 to 1, the win the BMW Championship. He's been playing very well in um, within the last couple of weeks in uh, the PGA. Now I want to discuss the Indiana Pacers making an unexpected coaching change and firing head coach Nate McMillan after giving him a mini contract extension pretty much and giving him a team option for the 2021-2022 season. This is surprising to me. Not to say that McMillan is Greg Popovich, but he, I think, has done a good job with the Pacers. Um, I was the one that was against them firing Frank Vogel a couple years ago. Um, I think McMillan, after the trading of Paul George, has really helped Victor Oladipo's development. He's helped develop... Um, DeMontis Sabonis. Um, Malcolm Brogdon had a good year this past year. Um, got a lot out of TJ Warren in the restart. Um, so this is somewhat surprising to me. Um, now the hot rumor is that they want to go after Mike D'Antoni, who might be a coaching free agent. And maybe um, they um, get some give the Rockets some compensation if the Rockets choose not to uh, let go of him. Um, it's going to be an interesting couple days coming up with the Rockets going up against the Thunder. So that series, I think, has a lot of impact on what the Pacers are going to do because, for me, I think the Rockets have to go to either the conference finals or take the Lakers to s Game 7 for Mike D'Antoni to come back to Houston. I think there's a chance Mike D'Antoni stays with the Rockets, but Indiana apparently wants him. I think that would be a great hire for the Pacers. D'Antoni's a win-now coach. Um, I think that his system would benefit for Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis, assuming that those two guys will be Indiana Pacers next year and going forward. I think Malcolm Brogdon's a huge beneficiary if they hire Mike D'Antoni. In terms of Nate McMillan's future, um, I think he, there's a chance he gets another shot in the league. I think there's a chance the Sixers interview him. The Pelicans interview him. And now there's a lot of rumors, speaking of Mike D'Antoni, that the Pelicans are looking at Mike D'Antoni. So, like, Mike D'Antoni is all of a sudden, like, a hot name in the NBA coaching free agents. And uh, whomever, like, let's say Mike D'Antoni lands elsewhere after, um, let's say the Rockets lose to the Thunder and he gets let go. Um, someone's going to land him, and someone's going to land a very good coach. Although um, he does not prioritize defense, as we know, but he's an outstanding offensive coach, and that's who I thought the Warriors were going to hire after they fired Mark Jackson back in 2014. That's who I thought their best fit was, and I thought that Stephen Curry would benefit from him, but they went with Steve Kerr, and how's that worked out? That's worked out pretty well as far as I'm concerned. They won all those championships. And then... Uh, Obviously, uh, D'Antoni has been with the Rockets these last couple of years after they fired Kevin McHale and has done a really good job for sure. So, um, yeah, the Pacers really want Mike D'Antoni, apparently. I think there's a shot they get him. But let's face it, Mike D'Antoni, I think, will also be in play in Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn should go after Mike D'Antoni. I think Mike D'Antoni is a name you're going to be hearing a lot within ESPN the next couple of weeks and who's going to land him. It's going to be similar to... Uh, in baseball, I remember Joe Girardi was technically a quote-unquote free agent manager, but he wound up um, 
the Yankees wound up bringing him back, um, and then they fired him essentially at the end of his contract. Maybe, maybe that's what the Rockets do, like what the Yankees did with Joe Girardi, pretty much fire him at the end of his contract. So um, that's a very interesting uh, subplot where Mike D'Antoni winds up if the Rockets let him go. I think the Pelicans, the Nets, the 76ers even, and um, uh, yeah, so the Pacers, the Nets, the Pelicans, and the 76ers will all have interest in Mike D'Antoni. And apparently the Sixers had interest in Tom Thibodeau and liked him, and uh, the Knicks took their time with their coaching search, and um, now they have Tom Thibodeau locked up. So um, I guess... um, you got to give the Knicks credit for doing their job because, God forbid, if this coaching search still dragged out and Tom Thibodeau was still on the market, then some of these other teams would have been aggressive trying to hire him, like the Sixers and the Nets or maybe Indiana. That would have been funny if Indiana hired Tom Thibodeau because um, I think that they would have done that just to uh, kind of stick it to the Bulls in a weird way. So, like, that would have been a fun uh, subplot if Tom Thibodeau wound up with the Indiana Pacers. But, no, he's with the Knicks. And I think there's a shot that Mike D'Antoni winds up um, not getting retained by the Rockets and winds up becoming the next head coach of the Indiana Pacers. So, that should be interesting. I have to talk about something important in um, the NBA going on right now, or I should say it's, like, a huge deal. It could wind up being important if it does actually happen. There's a chance that the Celtics and the Raptors might boycott Game 1 due to the the tragic shooting of um, that the uh, the tragic shooting in uh, in Wisconsin and the Detroit Lions actually canceled practice yesterday due to it. And, um, yeah, Jacob Blake, I was just blanking on his name. Um, and there's a lot of unrest in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. It was another police shooting. Um, it's obvi- I don't think it's getting the coverage that George Floyd got. Um, but the NBA is really... Um, their stars and their rest of their players in the league are like speaking up about it. And now um, there's a, actually a shot that the Celtics and the Raptors may boycott game one. Ultimately, I do think they're going to play. I do. The NBA playoffs are important and these players know it. And um, I think it's more likely they play than um, – they don't, um, so, um, Mark Spears reported that the Raptors and the Celtics players met last night at the hotel, possibly boycotting tomorrow game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals and other potential measures in light of the Jacob Blake shooting source from both teams says everything's on the table and the Celtics and the Raptors players are expected to meet again tonight. And then um, Spears said, feeling after meeting last night, it was that the majority of the Raptors and Celtics players wanted to play in game one after a meeting in the, ho- in the players' lounge at the Grand Destino Hotel. Both teams are expected to meet again tonight and discuss options. Uh, Jalen Brown and Fred Van Vliet spoke at the meeting last night. So I think they're going to play because a majority of the players want to play. I, I think that they will play. And then... Um, Nick Nurse said to the media, boycotting the game has come up to the demand a little more attention. And he also said he has heard a couple players talk about going home, which is absolutely, um, I think that's crazy and sad. And um, obviously, um, that would be a big loss for those respective teams. But I think ultimately they're going to play and rally around this, like how the Clippers rallied around Donald Sterling back in 2014. I know completely different situations. But um, the Clippers wound up getting their asses kicked by the Warriors in that game four after um, 
the whole Sterling thing happened. And then um, game five at home, they wound up um, winning in blowout fashion over the Warriors, and they rallied around that situation. So I think this ultimately could be somewhat of a uh, a rallying cry for uh, these respective teams, and they'll play their hearts out. So um, ultimately, I do think they'll play. Um, and the Raptors obviously want to defend their title. The Celtics are a team that are coming off the sweep over the Sixers. And I'm obviously going to make a prediction for the series tomorrow. Um, I don't know where I'm headed yet in terms of a prediction, but I'll certainly have one for um, tomorrow's show. Last but not least, best bet of the day brought to you by DraftKings. Um, I talked about this game earlier because it's going to be on TV tonight, the Dodgers and the Giants. I love the over eight. Um, Kevin Gossman pretty much is auditioning for a trade. Um, Clayton Kershaw on the bump for the Dodgers. The Giants' bullpen stinks. Um, I think the Dodgers can go over by themselves. I think that Gossman is mediocre. Um, I think that the Dodger offense is hitting very well right now. They always have success against the Giants. And quite frankly, the Giants have had some success over against the Clayton Kershaw in the past as well. So I could see this being like a 6-3 ball game and the total going over. So I love this over. So give me the over in the Dodgers-Giants game, minus 113. So a little bit of juice on the over. So that's it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the games in the NBA, NHL for the playoffs, and then baseball in the WNBA. Look ahead to tomorrow's slate. Um, we'll have a golf update tomorrow. Um, hopefully the Raptors and the Celtics figure out what they're going to do, and uh, we can pick that game, and um, we can pick some first-round games. So tomorrow's game six with the Clippers and the Mavs, and then you have uh, game six between the Jazz and the Nuggets tomorrow as well. And you got hockey too. So um, hope you guys have a great day, everyone.